But the purpose of this module is really to baseline everyone with um, at least a fundamental understanding of where, uh, what IKEA is, what Indeni is, and um, why we are here, um, you know, really wanting to foster this community of uh, what we call Ike or Indeni Knowledge Experts um, as a community um, as we uh, try to leverage a lot of the domain expertise that you guys have um, with Indeni. So, Today we're going to go over module one, which is going to be very fundamental. It's going to be, you know, covering what Indeni is, what we're looking for across all our Indeni knowledge experts. You'll hear me saying Ike very frequently, just for reference. Um, you know, what does the Indeni architecture look like? Um, how does it work together across all, each of the components? What the flow looks like? Um, what you will need to get started uh, as an expert, and how we uh, want to enable you so you don't get stuck. Um, towards the end, there's going to be an extra credit um, that may be helpful for you to uh, conceptualize what we're doing so far, but uh, it's not mandatory, so just keep that into a, a mind of reference. So what is Indeni? Um, really, it's, uh, it's really a tool used to help IT, and, uh, IT teams manage their infrastructure. Um, what Indeni does is it constantly learns um, from other systems in the infrastructure and um, maintain a knowledge database of what are known for best practices and how to adhere um, to an infrastructure um, that will um, employ the best practices that are available um, with the domain of knowledge that we want to leverage. Um, since 2009, Denny's mission statement has been really one main goal. It's to identify what could go wrong in the infrastructure and the different components and to reduce the amount of time of backpedaling and increasing the time involved in innovating and changing in the infrastructure of the current needs. Um, so that was a lot of words, but let's go dive into the architecture. Um, what is Indeni and how does it work? Um, as you can see here, there's two components. There are two components. There's a server and a collector components of the Indeni architecture. Um, what you will want to uh, probably focus more on is on the collector architecture and how it works. Um, mainly because that is how we are, what, that is the component utilized to actually look at the information on the data, uh, on the devices, parse it out into something that our servers and our rules can actually understand. Um, our collectors are used to do two things. One of them is to interrogate the device, and when it interrogates the device, it only knows two things. It only has the IP address and the logical name that you've tagged it. Um, once it identifies uh, uh, an ability to communicate to those devices, it will go through what we like to call the 20-question game. And it runs through a bunch of uh, commands to identify what model it is, what version, what operating system, you know, if it has any uh, modules in place, which ones are running, um, anything that, we, that could, we could leverage to identify the device further and that way identify what kind of scripts of commands we should run uh, on those devices. Um, sometimes if they're in a clustered environment, it's important to uh, run um, commands specific to a clustered group. So uh, ju that, I just wanted to bring that up for a reference. Um, so we communicate to the devices either through SSH or through an API query. Um, so sometimes we'll need uh, uh, sometimes the relevant information um, I'm a little bit more familiar, familiar with Palo Alto, so I know that we'll need an API key to access the devices if we're doing curl commands to it. Um, but yeah, so it, those are the two main mechanisms for communicating the device. Um, generally, we've seen that sometimes the output is more available on through HTTP or SSH. It really comes down to what's available through the output of the device. Um, so, that gives you a little overview of what the collector does. Um, we uh, will provide uh, examples of Indeni scripts later on, but they usually run at defined, predefined intervals that you can play around with. So, you know, for example, uh, you may want to check for CPU utilization every minute, but you may only want to check for the NTP server state every 30 minutes to an hour. Um, you know. We want to uh, minimize the impact uh, on the device uh, as we run these scripts. So that's something that we want to keep in mind as, uh, as a community to uh, when, we're when it comes to monitoring these devices. 
Once we've uh, interrogated the device and we've identified what it is, we tag it with, well, we actually uh, assign it to certain things which we call tags, and then those tags get also pushed onto what we call the time series database. Um, another thing that we, um, another thing that we also push to the time series database is uh, the values that we're pulling from the monitoring component, which is going to pull uh, values that we're checking for on a regular interval basis. And those are values that, we're, uh, that we assign a metric name to. So those metric names have a certain value and a logical name that is actually uniformly uh, recognized by our alerts. And we'll go over that later on, but that's just so that you can understand how it works. Uh, once that information gets pushed over to our time series database, which it has you know, the device ID, the values, the tags, the metric names, and the val metric values that we've pulled from, through the collector, that information gets stored in a time series database as a stateful, uh, for, as a stateful uh, uh, process. So another thing to note about the collector is that it actually acts as a stateless um, process. So um, all our scripts run without the ability of storing the information in the collector part. So um, if you want to think about uh, how you want to approach when you're building these, uh, indeni, uh, these indeni scripts, uh, you want to keep in mind that we want to, you know, for lack of better words, hot potato the, the values quickly over to the uh, time series database where that it gets stored um, over time. Um, the other component, and uh, this is going to be not so much of an emphasis uh, uh, during the training process, um, and I'll explain why, is a server component, which has the rules that are enabling the Indeni instance to populate the alerts on the GUI. So if you really think about the components that are uh, in the Indeni instance, we have the collector, the time series database, the server, and then the web GUI. Um, the server is responsible for pulling information from the time series database, usually in set intervals of every 60 seconds or what is recommended. And then um, that information uh, will be utilized to cross-reference to uh, the rules that are baked into the server. Um, those rules, if, uh, if applicable, will then generate an alert onto the GUI of the Indeni uh, instance. Um, if you guys haven't uh, had a look at the GUI, let me know and we'll go over that towards the end. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, the server is going to maintain the information of both uh, the time series database process and the rules process. And the rules are actually, uh, most often than not, a temp uh, in a template form. So the reason why we want to focus more on the collector scripts is that oftentimes we have a rule that's built out of the template already. And so the biggest challenge to generating these alerts of uh, identifying best practices is really figuring out what is the data that we're trying to pull from the device? What is the proper um, communication mechanism that we want to use? And how should we tag those values so that the rules can actually read them properly? So. Um, I have actually right here, if I can pull it up, um, I actually put, put together an architecture reference for, um, for a lot of new people that are on trying to understand how Indeni works. Uh, I think it's a great way to visualize how this works. Um, we often use uh, this device. It's not really a device, but it's called Acme Humidifier, and it's a uh, device actually that I think Yanni put together. but. Um, we use this example a lot to help demonstrate how each different component works. So initially, uh, when Indeni tries to connect to the device, we'll run a series of commands. Um, in this example, we're going to run through the SSH and run CLI commands. And as you can see, these are the outputs that are parsed or, or that are pulled from the commands that we're running. Once we get that information, that output gets, um, gets uh, parsed in the collector component. And whether it's the interrogation script we'll need to tag those certain values so that we understand that what the vendor is, what the product is, and what the operating system is, and a lot of other things that will be necessary in interrogation script. But if it's for monitoring, we use that information and that output and parse it so that we can tie it to a certain um, metric value. And that metric value will have a certain um, value that's, that we're trying to identify that our rules will read. I'll show you in a bit. Um, so here we're tying this metric value to uh, the value called humidity that our rules uh, uh, read on a regular basis from our time series database. And here we're also identifying several things, such as the interval that we're monitoring, 
um, what are the requirements to uh, run the script, whether it's the vendor uh, specific, whether it's product specific. We identify whether we're running it through SSH or API and what commands we're running. Um, our collector component or the monitoring component of the collector has three ways of parsing the data. It can do it through awk, JSON, or XML, depending on the data and the output that we need. Um, we've noticed that sometimes the output is through JSON, which is much more structured. Um, and so because of that, we have a different mechanism for parsing the data, as you can see right here. And here's another example for the XML. So one thing, that, uh, one thing I brought up earlier is that since this is a stateless process, we often write, uh, write our code so that it immediately provides some sort of value to the rules to read. So, um, you know, for example, you know, instead of storing every single uh, humidity value available over the, you know, the, uh, the course of five minutes and storing it here, that will get pushed off to the server component to, of the device. Once that gets pushed off to the time series database, which actually resides on the server component, we then go ahead, um, use the, uh, the rules to parse the information from the time series database, determine if there's a necessary rule that we can apply it to. So this is an example that I put together for our ACME humidifier. As you saw earlier, we were, ta uh, we were pu uh, pushing a metric value uh, for humidity and identifying it as such for our rule to understand. Um, here, we set up a threshold that if it was below 5% um, humidity, we would go ahead and alert uh, using the Indeni GUI using this description and this format. Um, you'll go over this a uh, little bit briefly later on, but I just want to give you a quick visualization of how that works. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, a big component of our server, uh, our rules are going to be templated, so it's going to be a lot easier for us to um, build those rules. If, but the biggest challenge for us is to, to identify what's going to be the um, communication method, what are the output that we're looking for, and how we, uh, how we um, parse that output so that we only get the relevant information. All right, so let me go back to our slides. So what you're going to need um, for the rest of the other modules, um, you're going to need a virtual environment of our 5.9 instance deployed. Um, if you haven't gotten the OVA link yet for uh, deploying it uh, as a VM, um, the product team will, can get that over to you. Um, another component that's going to be really important for uh, running these scripts is Command Runner. And it's a tool that we utilize to um, quickly simulate if whether or not uh, your Indeni scripts are working properly or not. Oftentimes, you can use it with the live configurations, but we simply will need an input text file and an Indeni script to run it against, and then the command runner will push out an output file that will determine whether or not it works. Um, if, uh, if you don't have it, you may need to download Java runtime environment as well if necessary, but the command runner will prompt you if you, don't, or if you do or do not have it. Um, another component, obviously, we're going to need Sublime or some text editor of choice. Uh, really up to you. Um, we found Sublime to be you know, just a, an easier one to utilize. Um, and speaking of easy integrations, we're going to be leveraging SourceTree as our Git application. Um, if you aren't familiar with Git, we actually have um, a lot of information of how to leverage SourceTree to push, um, push or commit your code onto our, um, our Git server, which is Bitbucket. And so uh, the reason why we use SourceTree is actually because it has an easy integration with a lot of our Atlassian products because um, it, uh, we have a button that literally gives you the ability to look at a ticket uh, requesting for a new monitoring script and then check out in SourceTree and makes it very easy for you to um, leverage a Git application if you haven't in the past. Um, speaking of Atlassian products, we use a quite a variety of them. Um, we're leveraging Confluence, which is uh, basically a wiki, and you'll find a lot of the information that we're going over through uh, in the modules in the Confluence page. So um, uh, towards the end, if you're stuck with anything that we've gone over, everything's immediately accessible in the Confluence if you, um, if you have access to it already. Uh, another component is the Bitbucket, which is our Git server, where we are pushing our information, uh, our code or scripts into. 
Um, there's, uh, if you are familiar with uh, Git applications, there's uh, what we what they call branches. Uh, the primary branch is the master branch where um, our GA instance is running uh, off of, but there's a separate branch that we will be working very closely under, which is called the staging. Um, and uh, the product team uh, will go over that in later modules. So uh, if you uh, don't have access to Bitbucket, it's publicly as accessible. You can take a look whenever you have the chance. Um, another component is going to be JIRA. That's going to be a very important part for you uh, to leverage because that's going to be our ticketing system and oftentimes we'll be living in uh, tickets uh, to uh, build these in Denny scripts um, oftentimes because uh, whether it's a customer or an R&D team looking to leverage a new monitoring script, we'll be pushing that, sorry guys, uh, we'll be pushing that through JIRA. Um, and so uh, make sure to have oversight in JIRA and getting updates on when there's, when there's a new ticket being pushed and whether there's one being assigned to you. Um, another thing that we'll need, uh, and this is primarily for you for testing, will to be having access to our, uh, our lab. Um, you'll get VPN credentials to access to it shortly after this call. Um, and I think some of you guys already got uh, access to it. Um, if not, uh, let us know. But uh, we're leveraging Slack as our, um, as our uh, communication point. So tools to succeed and what will help you uh, be successful. Um, Obviously, the Confluence is going to be our, our your main source for Wiki for a lot of information that we've gone over through all these modules. Um, please, you know, if you need to backtrack and look at anything, take a look at the Confluence page. The community page is going to be full of a lot of resources already already available, um, thanks to a lot of our current uh, uh, knowledge experts or, or our Ikes. Um, and our, our forums will have a lot of the Q and A that you may or may not have already considered, and you can just quickly review over. Um, and you know, uh, I think the biggest uh, component to all of this is simply getting exposure to the KD lab. We have a lot of devices already connected in there, so if you're testing for specific devices, we probably have it already for simulation. So um, and getting access to that as soon as possible will be really useful. Um, Jira ticketing, obviously, as we talked about before, and Big Bucket. Um, last, a lot, uh, but uh, the most important is um, leveraging your new Ike friends. So, you know, James, uh, if you have any questions or anything else, uh, or, uh, you know, if there's, or, uh, if there's uh, anything that our consultants can help with, let us know. Um, this applies to everyone else out there that's uh, onboarding. Um, you know, we want to apply a crowdsourcing, crowdsourcing methodology to this. So um, when we're developing the knowledge, sometimes, um, some of that domain uh, might be covered by one of your uh, fellow Ike friends, if not by us. So um, please reach, uh, leverage them as you can. So last but not least, we want to go over the extra credit. Um, I think this will help you visualize what, how you want uh, the proper mental framework for building these Indeni scripts. Um, we're going to keep this very abstract. So think of one Ubuntu-based issue that you can uh, that you can think of. Um, and answer the questions of what you are looking for, how, and why you're looking for those certain values, and why that's pertinent to that certain issue, and just plain English, and see if you can submit that in the uh, in Denny uh, community page if you can. Um, and that it'll be reviewed by either by the product team or through one of our Ike, you know, one of your new Ike friends. Um, at this point, we're not really looking to build the scripts yet. You just want to make sure that we have the right mental framework um, set in place. So um, I think that pretty much concludes uh, my presentation. I mean, I, I did kind of want to keep this short. I think a lot of this can be really easily referenceable through the wiki page. But um, I wanted to spend the rest of this time to uh, answer any questions if necessary.